Hey, what's up everyone, Mark Rosen here, and today we're going to be breaking down who I think is going to be the future of women's track and field. I'm going to start the video right now. All right, so women's track and field right now, I think is at its all time high in terms of overall viewership and just interest just because there's so many great sprinters. I mean, obviously the big one is Elaine Thompson Hurrah, who just defended her 100 meter and 200 meter in the Olympics. But then you also have Shelly Ann Fraser Price. You have Sha'Carri Richardson, who has obviously been making a lot of noise in women's track and field. And then this woman, I think has unbelievable potential for what she can achieve here. Moving forward, we have Christine and Boma, who it's such an interesting story just because I guess based off of um, her physiology, she can't compete in the 400 meter. And I think if, if I'm not mistaken, it's anything between the 400 meter and the one mile, but she can't compete in the 200 meter. It just seems like kind of an interesting rule. And I guess it's all based off of the testosterone levels. I looked a little bit into it, not a ton into it, but um, I do think that she, from a you know short sprinter perspective, which is mostly what I you know work with in the 100, 200, um, and even the 60, I think that she ends up having such a bright future uh, moving forward. Just because if we look here, um, we're gonna look on the right. You know, she doesn't run a great curve, and this is it in Brussels a couple days ago here. Um, she really doesn't run a great curve, and to me, you know, she really lacks bringing the outside arm forward and through, right? She's really short on bringing that, that art right arm through. And, and I think, you know, being able to run that curve, you really do have to be able to control that outside arm really well. She does have a really a lot of extension there in that back arm, but really doesn't bring that arm through at all, um, especially in comparison to, you know, some of the other runners in the event. And, you know, just doesn't really run the curve very well. And if we go back to the 200 meter in the Olympics, this is where, you know, she was coming around the curve, right? She's not in a great place overall. But what's amazing about her and why I think she's the, the future of the women's track and field is from this position, you know, where she's at here, she ends up going and passing all of these, you know, top women and coming in second, right? So if we fast forward through here, you just see her literally fast forward, you know, her running almost seems like in, in her uh, ability to catch up here, you know, she just comes out of nowhere and ends up coming in, in second place. And we're gonna really quick just go and, real, and, and break down her turnover speed. So she's at 660 here. She's probably off at about probably 668-ish maybe. You know, so that's a little bit longer for contact time than we're typically used to. Somewhere between 0.08 and 0.09, which is a little bit longer than, you know, what we're typically used to. But then she's able to swing that leg through so quickly and get right back underneath. And so she's hitting the ground back at, let's say, 05. So she's at a 3.37. So she's at a 0.37 in terms of her overall uh, turnover rate. And it, but she's just able to pick up so much distance per step, right? So as she's pushing off, we can really see how upright she's able to stay and still be able to get that leg back behind her so well. So if we were going to compare it to Shelly Ann Fraser Price in that same amount of time, she's sitting down at 6'8", 0. She's off at 0.08 and then touching back down at 2.7. So she's closer to 0.39, right? So Shelly Ann Fraser Price is you know her turnover is 0.39 her full contact time is 0.08 where Christina Obama right now is 0.37 in terms of turnover and you know has about the same contact time so she's cycling her legs faster and is taller you know at this point I think that ends up being a big part of you know why she's able to come in and pass all these women up here at the end and you know it's just crazy to be able to see that she just turned 18 in May. So, you know, she really has a lot more to be able to work on. And, and again, you know, she was running the 400 meter. Her, her main race was the 400 meter. And then, you know, leading up to the Olympics, they said that she couldn't run the 400 meter. So then she went down to the 200 meter and won silver in, you know, uh, just a matter of months. I'm gonna quickly interrupt this video just to say if you like the information, go ahead and click that thumbs up, subscribe down below, and we're gonna hop right back in the video. Just an unbelievable talent overall to be able to, you know, go to the Olympics and win silver in, you know, basically short notice and, you know, just has this crazy ability to come back, right? Even in this race here on the right, 
she's in a place where she's she's way behind coming around the curve. You know, she's just not in a great position here, but she just has, and, and if we look at her arm, she has a little bit of kind of an interesting arm motion with like the upper body. She kind of does like a push back with her hands there. I usually try to coach that out of people, but um, you know, just because I think it's a little bit of an inefficient movement pattern, but you know, she obviously is something that it, somebody that is able to make it work. She doesn't put a huge focus on bringing that, that right arm through, especially look, she leaves her right arm like at about her chest. She's much more outward with her, her motion on the right side and then pulls way back with that right arm. Left side, she gets the, the hand a little bit higher up, but then pulls more kind of back like this with the left arm. So, you know, she definitely has a, an interesting running style. I don't know if that's something um, that you'd want to necessarily coach out just because her top speed is so great. Uh, but then at the same time, I'm like, you know, she is able to clean up some of her mechanics there. I do think that she's going to be able to really surpass a lot of these, you know, great women. Um, you know, I don't know if she's going to be able to win. I think she could, she could definitely take the, the 200 meter world record, you know, if, as long as she's able to continually progress. I mean, nobody at 18 was winning silver medals, right, in the uh, Olympics. So the fact that she was able to just do that, especially given that she wasn't even really training for this event, she's already talked about how she's gonna give the 100 meter a try as well. So, you know, her top speed is unreal. And I, and I again, think that she could still clean up a lot of that, her overall mechanics, and that will just help her in being able to get to those top speeds and, and just being that much more efficient. Her leg turnover is great. She's a naturally very, very gifted sprinter. Uh, and, and I think she's gonna end up being a future star here in you know women's track and field, especially in those sprinting events, as long as everything ends up being you know fine with her testosterone levels and everything like that, which I, I don't think that that should be an issue. I don't understand why it is as big of an issue as it has been. So, you know, hopefully that ends up being cleared up. I know there's a lot of investigation going on about all that. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts if you think that, you know, she should be able to compete or shouldn't, or, you know, what she should be able to compete in the 400 meter or not. I would love to be able to hear your guys' thoughts. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But if you like the information, go ahead and click that thumbs up down below, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, you can leave those down below. Always checking out my comments just to see what everybody's talking about. And, you know, would happy to be able to do a video that you're able to recommend. So, and if you guys are interested, go ahead and check out the description down below. We do have speed breakdowns, speed programs, things to be able to help you out overall in your ability to run faster. I do think the speed breakdown is the best thing that we offer for you guys just because it's a very, very cheap thing overall. It's only $97 and you get four weeks of going deep into your mechanics. We break down from the side, from the back, from the front. We'll break down your start, your transition phase, your top and speed phase. This is mostly focused for sprinters. So if you're a soccer player, a, you know, obviously track and field athlete, but even lacrosse player, a softball player, you know, there's a lot of things that you could do that we, we will be able to focus on and help you out with within your sprinting form. So if you're looking to get faster and, you know, would like to be able to send a video and this is like the best place to be able to do it just because I put a big focus on the objective side of how to run faster, foot contact time, stride length, your ability to get off the ground quickly through the transition phase on and off the ground through the transition phase and really being able to maximize those three parts makes it so it's really much more of an objective standpoint here if you could take less stride lengths or if you could make it so you spend less time on the ground or even if you can turn over faster all those things are going to make it so you can get faster there and so really being able to focus on those three main points end up being the keys to being able to help you out with your speed overall so if that makes sense to you i highly recommend you guys checking out the description down below to find a little bit more about our programs as always thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon